I am Manpreet Bhatia. I am the Operations Director of Geospatial Ventures Limited. And I am here today to talk about what we are, what we do, on the focus on low-cost asset and manufacture infrastructure and monitoring using GNSS-enabled IoT devices coupled with INSA. So we are a startup company, and we were formed in January 2020, so very new. Uh, and we are based in the UK, where we have two offices, one in the University of Nottingham, where we have our own lab, on roof lab, and uh, GNSS reference stations. And the other office is in Newquay, Cornwall, which is also known as UK's first horizontal launch site. You might know this as Spaceport Cornwall. So although we're based in the UK, we supply our solutions across the world. And what sets us apart from the other companies is that we use geospatial technologies to solve real world problem at a fraction of a cost. And I'll be talking some of these with you today. Sorry. So what we do? Well, our services fall into three different categories, training, research and development, and product development. We have a team of professional trainers who can provide training for beginners right through to technical experts. And we have a range of different courses available, starting from few hours to few days. Uh, and we can adapt the courses to meet your requirements. We are experts in GNSS, position, navigation, and timing, mapping and surveying, and geospatial technologies. And some of the companies that we work with are ACOM, Siemens, Murphy Geospatial, and Manpower Group. So these are just some of the companies that just out of the name a few. And we provide solutions for lots of different applications, such as track and trace, condition monitoring, structural health monitoring, air quality monitoring. So like I said to you, I will be talking some of the solutions. So there's one of our products here that you can see on the screen as well. This is a local safe device that uses high accuracy RTK GNSS, and it includes an integrated antenna and a battery inside it. I know it looks really big on the screen, but this is what the device is. This is what it looks like. It's about four centimeters across and three centimeters in thickness. You're more than welcome to come and feel for it if you want. And it is designed to uh, be used because it's easy to set up and easy to use. And this links to our in-house command and control dashboard that provides full analytics. Now I'm going to hand over to my colleague, Paul Batia who can be going into a bit more detail about these things. Thank you. Thank you for listening. OK, so thanks, Manpreet. So I'm Paul Batia. I'm the Managing Director of Geospatial Ventures Limited, working together um, with Manpreet. So just a little bit about condition monitoring, why we need it, and what we're focusing on. So that company came about from a group of individuals who've had about over, th well, Myself, about 15 years experience in GNSS with the University of Nottingham and a team that's been working on um, infrastructure monitoring, condition monitoring for many, many years using state-of-the-art equipment and high-end geodetic receivers. And we've been working on land planning, bridges, dams, power installations, skyscrapers, and smart cities. The device you see here is a prototype. It's got an external antenna output on it as well. It's got an internal antenna inside it here. And it's um, self-powering. And it's obviously IoT connected to the internet and through cellular as well. So why do we need these services for predictive maintenance, for proactive responses, to opti optimize maintenance, avoid breakdowns, extend the lifetime of structures, and to help future design and to improve safety? Now. How we're developing this is the first project that we're doing is called artificial intelligence for land planning. So artificial intelligence is the buzzword that you've heard a lot today and you hear a lot. But what we're actually doing is taking lots of different um, inputs and sensors. So for example, in this device, we have, um, in, we have 
uh, an IMU, so we're doing inertial sensing in there as well. And we're connecting to external data sources. So that means a lot of um, environmental data, such as um, CAD data for buildings, uh, weather data, a lot of that um, information going into the, inter to the artificial intelligence model. And in that as well, we're using um, interferometric cell, which is basically radars on satellites in space that bounce signals off structures on the Earth and off corner reflectors that we put there to measure millimetric changes in land height. And that's what we're aiming for in all of this with the artificial intelligence model and what we're doing with the GPS, with the GNSS um, devices and the corner reflectors as well. So just to reiterate what Mampri was saying, really our um, USP is here that we're really reducing the cost of this and we're combining different sensors to give ongoing monitoring with modern technology and processing methods. So it's a low cost ground uh, deformation monitoring system. We use reference corner reflectors and base stations and then corner reflectors that are spaced out there using free data from satellites and then combining that with the measurements from the GNSS. So this project has been is being used on a number of different sites around the UK, and you can see there our experimental system with the batteries and the solar power and everything for that. So Manpreet talked about a tracking hub as well. What you see here is um, an early version of our tracking hub, but we can do full analytics. So you've got two points there, and what we can do is for all of the points, for the GPS devices, and also for the corner reflectors and the natural reflectors from Intel, we can click on that and get a full time series and full analytics of data. So you can see here a distribution of the points that we get from the INSAR um, processing and then clicking on each of those points we can get the time series so we can do full analytics. Like I said, that's for each of the devices as well. So I'll just um, recap that slide. So we're using not SATA but data, free satellite data for the insight, we have a full processing chain which combines all of those readings. Uh, we have our own cloud storage, so you get your own, you get your own access to that portal, and we have our full in-house processing and support for that. So the interesting thing that we think that we're moving into in terms of um, CubeSats and IoT is nowadays CubeSats is the technology where satellites is moving forward to. It's, um, it provides a massive cost saving over traditional satellites and it means that companies can get access to data and missions from satellites. So CubeSat, for those of you who don't know, is, um, cons consists of U's, units. Each of those units is 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. The domain has largely been for R&D and for science, but these are really coming into the fore now. So our use here is through IoT. So this doesn't exist as a constellation yet. There are some constellations out there, but we know that we're getting corrections from GNSS on small satellites as well as um, satellites that are a bit further out in, in space. And we have the experience through our company and our, and our network around the constellation design. So we've designed constellations that allow us to achieve this. And we're talking about low cost for, for launch and for operation of these systems. And what it allows us to do is to provide corrections and allow us to give uninterrupted connectivity in all parts of the world. So basically, they're continuous and global monitoring coverage with a prompt identif identification of issues for timely maintenance and repairs. So like I said, what that allows us to do is to deploy these, these um, devices everywhere. So Manpreet mentioned about real world solutions. So what we're doing for our clients, and the clients we're working for at the moment are Murphy Geospatial and ACOM that, um, that Manpreet mentioned, looking at geohazard sites, so collapsing structures such as roads and geohazards around environmental sectors and new technologies, so new installations of infrastructure as well where there needs to be ongoing monitoring. And a big issue there is also about power and is about management and about remote management. So those are the things that, that we're designing into these solutions, as well as the AI and, um, and um, the actual sensors. So just in summary, what we do is integrate intelligent geospatial solutions in technology. We provide cost-effective 
turnkey monitoring. Main question that we always get asked is, what does that mean and how cheap is it? Well, it's probably cheaper than anybody else. So you can see here why we're working on this is this is a combination of commercial off-the-shelf components with our own firmware and our own power management and all of those. And it's flexible, so we can kind of um, tailor that to clients' needs. So configurable solutions, providing millimeter-level measurements with comms in remote and hard-to-reach areas. We have solutions for that already, but you can see where we're going in the future. Incorporating artificial intelligence and digital twins. And we're also providing that R&D support, test, training, and you get kind of the support of experts in these fields as well. So just to summarize, Enz Manpreet Bhatia is the operations director. We're here until the end of tomorrow, myself as well, Paul Bhatia. We're on stand D3019 in Hall 3.2. It's at the back in the corner, so we haven't been getting that much traffic because everybody walks straight through. So do come and see us. You can talk more and learn more about what we're doing. And you can scan the QR co code, obviously, to, um, to get to our website. Thank you very much.